Welcome to my latest video. In this one we're going to talk about how you can get gigs for your band or if you're a solo artist or a comedian. Now at least you know it's my hair because it's raining out here. If this wasn't my hair, believe me, I would not be out here. These should apply just the same. Now you'll be asking yourself, why is this old bloke daring to say I can help you find work. Well, I've been an agent and my music promoter for nearly 50 years now. Well, I know I can help you. We're gonna ask five questions. Now these questions are interlinked. Well, when you watch the end, you will see that it's all linked up. Question number one, who are you asking? Not every venue is the, the same, and so you must approach them totally differently. For example, an art center or a community theater is not as reliant on ticket sales and on the sales of beer and food perhaps, as say a small local club or a large concert hall. So they will require different techniques for them to give you a gig because they have different reasons for putting on shows. If the reasons are largely artistic, like if the venue is, I say, an art centre or community theatre that gets grants from central or local government, then if you have a fantastic act that's very interesting and unique, you stand much more chance to getting work even if you don't have a huge following. Whereas if you're playing a lo local club, frankly, the guy that runs that is probably up against the constant battle. I mean, this was pre-coronavirus, so after it's going to be a lot worse. That's the reason why you have to know who you are contacting, whether it's a local promoter, a national promoter, a small venue, a small theatre, a small club, a big festival, a small festival, a jazz club, a folk club, a rock club. They all are looking for different things for different reasons. And you have to know who it is you're asking as to how you're going to approach it. The second question, which is, why should they give me a gig? Why should they give me a gig and my band a gig as opposed to anybody else? You've got to look at this from the point of view of the person you're contacting. And to contact people, I suggest you write a short or to the point personalized email that tells them why they should employ you. What's in it for them? That's the thing because too many people send me emails. Oh, we are the, we are, we are a fantastic young blues band. We are a fantastic this folk band. We are, we are brilliant. We're so good. We're the new stones, etc. It's always about what they are, whereas, which is fine. I mean, that is what you are. That's what you could to tell to the people who go and see you, not the people you're trying to get gigs for. Because when you're trying to get gigs, you've got to tell the person what's in it for them. That's the secret of getting a gig. The person who's booking you has to have a reason to book you. And so if you can think of a reason, and if you can tell them what that reason is, and you can be a salesman for your band, and if you can work towards that, that is the secret of getting gigs. Why should I put on your band? Then brings us to number three. Have I done all my research? Now by that, I mean that if you're gonna send out emails, don't just send out emails to a thousand venues all over the place, find as many as you possibly can and send them all the same one. Great long thing that says that uh, cut and paste. Do not cut and paste. Each one has to be individual, which means you've got to do a bit of research. Go to their website, find out what sort of acts they have on. They might have sections about what we are looking for. Read all those things, find out the person's name, even if you haven't got the exact name of the person that does what you want. For example, if you go to an art centre, it might just have the name and email of the director of the art centre or of the community theatre. Send an email to them. If somebody sends me a personal email, I'm more likely to forward it to the right person if I'm not the right person. So that's a good thing to do. Go to the gigs if you can at that venue. See what it's like, see what the vibe's like. 
If you get the chance to introduce yourself, by all means, introduce yourself. Do not just turn up in the middle of the day at a theatre or a club expecting them to talk to you. They'll have other things they have to do, because believe me, Booking an act that they don't want is not high on anybody's list of priorities. So just bear that in mind. They get a lot of people like you asking them, except not like you, because you have this advice that you know to target and how to get your point across to them. Which brings us on to the fourth question. Can I help you? You're saying that to the person at the venue. Can I take flyers? to the record shop for you. Can I put a poster up in my friend's uh, chip shop or whatever, right? Offer to help them establish a relationship. And if you get a, a gig, do everything that you can to get people there. That's very important because even if they're the most non-commercial venue in the world, they will not like it if nobody turns up to your gig. So do everything you can to get people to your gig. Basically, which brings on to question five. Am I doing everything I can? That's a very hard question to answer. It's not good just sending off an email. As yes, you find five to ten venues that you really want to play at, varying from there, the, this is like quite realistic to this would be nice. I think do one or two aspirational ones because you never know. You stand as much, almost as much chance. So 10 places, maybe 12 if you've got the time and got the effort to put into it. Don't just send out 10 emails and forget about it. Follow up, do some work on it. If the 10 or 12 you've chosen don't reply, send them another email, a nice email saying, excuse me, I sent you an email last week. Have you had a chance to da da da? Don't drive them mad. The other extreme of this is from doing nothing is doing is bombarding people with um, with um, do everything you can to make it work. That's the thing. And that's the best that you could do. And I'll do more of these at some stage. Let me know how you get on by commenting and also like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time, hopefully, for the next video.